The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us for the News at Noon. I'm Maddie Jansen. Next month, the federal government will begin mailing at home COVID test kits to for free to any U.S. household that wants one. The White House is preparing to ship as many as 500 million kits and is setting up a website for people to submit their requests. The federal government also plans to set up new testing sites nationwide. The U.S. also lags behind other countries in making testing affordable. And now for a look at our local COVID-19 numbers. Current Public Health reported 220 new cases this morning and four new deaths. There are still no confirmed cases of the Omicron variant here in Kern County. According to state data, 112 people are hospitalized locally with the virus, while 27 are fighting for their lives in local ICUs. Former President Donald Trump reveals he received a booster shot of the COVID-19 vaccine, drawing boos from a crowd in Dallas. Both the president and I are vaxxed, and uh, did you get the booster? Yes. I got it too. Okay, so... Um... Oh, don't, 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 no, no. Trump made the disclosure during the final stop of the History Tour, a live interview show he's been doing with former Fox News host Bill O'Reilly. Trump has refused to urge his supporters to take the COVID-19 vaccine, even though Republicans remain far less likely than Democrats to be protected. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. We'll see you soon. The Kern County Public Defender's Office has been appointed to represent the Inglewood man accused of raping and killing 13-year-old Patricia Alatori. Chief Deputy Public Defender Tanya Richard confirmed in court Tuesday that she and Deputy Public Defender Thomas Pope will represent Armando Cruz going forward, taking over for the two Los Angeles attorneys who requested to be removed from the case. Superior Court Judge Colette M. Humphrey set a hearing for January 25th where a new trial date will be scheduled. Cruz, 25, could face the death penalty if convicted. Cruz allegedly met Alatori on social media and kidnapped her after threatening to post inappropriate pictures of her online. 17 Crime Watch now and now to the arrest of a Kern County firefighter after investigators say they found more than 500 images of suspected child pornography in his possession. The Sheriff's Department says 35-year-old Christopher Vega was arrested yesterday at his home and is being held on $2 million bail. Detectives served search warrants Friday at multiple locations in a child porn investigation and say that they identified Vega as a suspect. The images were reportedly found on devices seized from his home and workplace. Vega's due in court tomorrow. Anyone with information is urged to call KCSO at 861-3110 or the secret witness hotline at 322-4040. We're learning more about what caused a gun to go off in a local hospital last night. It happened at Adventist Health Bakersfield around 11 p.m. The hospital says a patient was voluntarily handing over personal property, which included a loaded firearm, and that gun accidentally discharged. No one was hurt, but a portion of the hospital was put on lockdown and Bakersfield police were called out. Originally, BPD reported to us a visitor was involved, but the hospital says that was not the case. No arrests were made. From our 17 News follow-up file now, it has been one year since Orrin and Orson West, young brothers, were reported missing by their adoptive parents out of California City. The adoptive parents said that Orrin 4 and Orson 3 vanished from the family's backyard. The Bakersfield Police Department soon took over the investigation due to the many ties to the city. The family had lived in Bakersfield shortly before the boys went missing. 17's Christian Galena will have more on the West Boys case tonight on 17 News at 6. Anyone with information on the boys or their disappearance is asked to call the current secret witness line. Once again, that number is 661-322-4040. Today also marks exactly one year since UC Santa Cruz engineering student 
22 year old Dane Elkins went missing after leaving his car and belongings on a freeway in the Tahone Pass. Since then, several people have reported seeing Elkins here in the Central Valley, giving his family renewed hope of finding him. He had been recently experiencing mental distress, according to his mother. Elkins has reportedly been spotted in Oakdale, Mojave, and the Kern River Valley. Anyone with information on where he may be is urged to join the Searching for Dane Elkins Facebook group for any updates and possible sightings. As Dane may have paranoia, those who see him are urged to discreetly take a picture or photo from a distance and send it to Dane's mother, Deborah. You can also text or call 562 504 6005. 17 News is your local election headquarters. The California Citizens Redistricting Commission late last night unanimously approved new congressional and state legislative maps. As we've been reporting, the commission has been hearing public input and the Central Valley has been a hotly contested region. The redrawing of district boundaries takes place once a decade. We have a link to the newly drawn boundaries on our website, KGET.com, and we'll have much more on how Kern County is impacted tonight on 17 News. When announcing a multi-million dollar plan aimed at reducing crime in California last week, Governor Gavin Newsom pointed to Kern County and its soaring homicide rate as an example of what needs to change. It's interesting, the murder capital, tragically, in California is Kern County. It's just not a red or blue issue. In a press conference announcing a $320 million plan to fight crime in California, Newsom called out Kern County, insisting there wasn't a political motive, but Kern's district attorney disagrees. Of course there is. Why is he going to call out L.A.? His buddy George Gascon is the district attorney down there. And I don't think he wanted to talk about his failures, but lash out at the county that voted to recall him by 60%. Either way, with rising crime rates throughout the state and recent booms of smash and grab robberies, public safety seems to be poised to become a dominant issue in political football in the 2022 election cycle. And that already seems to have started. Republican Assemblyman Vince Vong joined the partisan divide, saying Democrats' policies lay the groundwork for skyrocketing crime. And Kern's DA agreed, highlighting the disconnect between a Democratic governor and local officials in conservative, hard-on-crime counties. New details now in a smash and grab that happened at Valley Plaza Mall earlier this month. The four burglars who smashed a display case at Kevin Jewelers stole about $100,000 in merchandise. That's according to a recent court filing obtained by 17 News. Police say no arrests have been made in the December 9th incident. If you know anything about it, call Bakersfield Police. The Bakersfield Kern Regional Homeless Collaborative and local leaders and community members gathered today in memory of people experiencing homelessness who died this year. Studies across the world have confirmed the relationship between a lack of housing and increased mortality. Research shows that homeless persons are three to four times more likely to die than the general population. That's why community members and local leaders, including Mayor Karen Goh, gathered for the homeless person's memorial vigil. I just want to thank our community. I want to thank Mayor Go, uh, City Serve, our homeless service providers, and our membership for coming to this inaugural event. Uh, it was really important to see the community support, and I think we're seeing that in spades today. The at least 86 unhoused people died in Kern County this year. The vigil included prayer, reflection, and a dove release in music. Similar vigils are held around the world on the winter solstice, the longest night of the year. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.